Hey, uh, my name is Marcello, I'm, uh, and welcome to Between Two Volans. Uh, this is my co-host, Dan McInerney. Yep, we are the threat research team here at Protect AI, and so today we're going to go over some of the vulnerabilities that we saw in our last threat research report that we released in January. We should start out, though, by acknowledging the fact that even though this is Between Two Volans, unlike Between Two Ferns, we're not going to have any celebrities on this show. That's true. So we're not going to have Obama, like Hillary Clinton, or Duff. I mean, we could just name as many famous people as ben we want uh, and just go on with that, but, uh, but yes, you, you're right. Yeah, There's you, 7 billion people that will not who, be on the show. Who else are we going to have on the show, Dan? All right, so <laughs> moving right along, we have January's vulnerability report. Uh, I think the most interesting one is actually not on this vulnerability report. We actually did a whole blog post about oh, that's, it. That says great things about our vulnerability report. I know. <laughs> We did a whole blog post on uh, a Triton inference server vulnerability that was pretty fascinating because the Triton inference server is probably not that well known outside like the AI world, but inside the AI world, it's really, really popular. And what we found, not we, but Like Beef on yes. the hunter.com bug bounty platform. Shout out, shout out to Like Beef. He found a file overwrite vulnerability. And the fun part of this job is when they, like reporters submit something and then we get to go and like try and push it to the extreme and see how far you can get. And so or build on their work. Build yeah, on their yeah, work, yeah, right. Exactly. And so this one was just a file overwrite and uh, we turned it into full remote code execution. Yep. After taking a few detours, but you can talk about that. So if I remember correctly, because this was a while ago when I published mm -hmm. this, but the way this worked is that uh, the file overwrite vulnerability, uh, using that file overwrite vulnerability, you're able to uh, write a Triton config file to disk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, that basically specifies to use the Python backend for that model, which just basically means that you're able to create like a model out of a Python script. So basically, it's like you can just tell Triton, hey, run this Python script with whatever code I give you. And with that, you just basically put in a interpreter or a shell or whatever payload you desire, and you just get a shell at that point. Yeah. So you had to be running it in like a non-standard configuration. You had to use the dash dash model mode explicit yes. equals true so that you could oh, load yeah. and unload yeah. models. That's a good point. I and we found that. a weird detour on this too because we we initially were just trying to, we went a little too complicated in how we were going to make the, the remote code execution execute code until we saw that there's this Python backend. And we're like, wait yeah. a second. And then we realized we actually don't even need this vulnerability at all to get remote code execution. You yeah. have to just get remote code execution. It turns out, the box. like remote code execution becomes sort of a feature in like NVIDIA Triton when you just enable that flag. Right. So because you're loading untrusted models and models yeah. can execute code. Yeah. So we're like, okay, well. <laughs> yeah, you're able to basically reload models on the fly. Yeah. Like with that flag enabled. So you can uh, get two different you... ways of getting remote yeah, code execution exactly. there. So that exactly. I think was the most interesting one. And uh, we should pull up month. the and and, and uh, our, someone is going to put this in the video, but. Uh, we're gonna. You should pull up the uh, actual original report. There was a lot of ML flow ones today, or not today, but in this uh, monthly report. It's somewhat common, and I don't want anybody to think that like the ML flow developers are, are, you know, writing bad software. They just write very popular software, and they fix these things really quickly. So, shout out to them for sure because they fix all of these things. They take them serious and they fix them quick. Yes. Probably the most interesting one, the arbitrary file delete, which oh, is yeah. right which here. This was, this was Mizu. And I have no uh, idea if yeah. I'm saying shout this out, right. Shout, shout out, to, out Mizu. to Mizu. He writes great reports, and he had one here where you can just arbitrarily delete files on the system uh, due to the function that validates whether uh, a user input is safe. It's a custom written function, and you can actually just do a uh, double URL encoding bypass because... Oh, yeah, I remember this one, actually. Because yeah, of yeah. some oddities with URL lib uh, to path name, which is a function that's used in one of these Yeah, Mizu ones. always comes up with, with some interesting ML flow. Yeah. Uh, exploit chains. Are, yeah. It's not really a chain, but it's like a series of, of nuances within the code that lead to 
file traversal. I think he probably knows MLflow better than about half the developers. I mean, <laughs> he's yeah. really gone through and seen some pretty <laughs> detailed have. takes. <laughs> he definitely has found all of the nuances uh, with the URL escapings and yeah, and the the support for URL URLs in general in MLflow. That is for sure. A couple XSSs, Transformers, Malicious Model, Upload, to RCE. So we should kind of explain how this whole triage process works too. Is the way this works is the maintainers will get back to us on the Hunter reports, and if they say yes, this is a vulnerability, then they go assign a CVE. If it goes past 45 days, mm -hmm. um, depending on if there's an extension or not, then we go through and we triage these and yep. determine their validity. So you can yell at us if uh, something goes wrong. Yeah, but so, so sometimes I find that uh, the maintainers will sometimes give a vulnerability a CVE, even if I wouldn't. And I mean, yeah. that's, that's their prerogative. Yeah, it's no, their, no, it's, it's, their, their it's their project. And it's sometimes the opposite too, where like sometimes we think it's a vuln vulnerability, but like they don't they don't think it is. Yeah. So I mean, at that point, we're just like, okay, well. It's fine, but uh, but yeah, most of the time, but most of the time, there's a decent amount of agreement regards yeah. to security vulnerabilities, unless it's like a super squirrely one that uh, is full of nuance. That sometimes yeah. something sometimes things get lost in the conversations. Uh, I think those are probably the most interesting ones. We highlighted three MLflow ones. There's uh, another local file include. That's a fairly common one. I feel like local file include is really common in AI in general, mostly yes. because these applications have to interact with the hard drive and file system like yeah we're just like in by, shares yeah, by nature like, of yeah. being in AI you're saving models to disk and there's data all over the place and they want to make sure that there's freedom to pull that data from somewhere on the file system yep and so local and file include if you guys are trying to hunt bugs is a really good one to go for try the double URL encodings you know yeah all of the anything anything and everything to find those file traversal vulnerabilities is probably a very good bet to I, get a bounty yeah i think that's the most common one we see is path traversals uh yes path traversals and also command injection we have a decent amount yeah of those actually arbitrary file reads arbitrary uh path lookups as well sometimes yeah although i think those rarely go arbitrary i think i've seen like one i think it was yours actually now that I recall. Oh, yeah, that was H2O. Yeah, yeah that was H2O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H2O is a very good project to find vulnerabilities in. Shout out to H2O uh, for that. But other than that, yeah, I think I think file file override vulnerabilities are the probably the most common one that we see. Yeah. All right, I think that about wraps up uh, our time checking out the monthly vulnerability report. Yep, and we'll see you next time with uh, even less celebrities than this show. <laughs> Ready to spotlight your skills? Join the hunt on Hunter.com.